Thank you, Madam Speaker. Honourable Senator. On the report, which deals with the Senate's budget for the financial year 2023-2024. In summary, the anticipated budget is estimated at $126.7 million, which is $4.9 million or 4% over the 2022-2023 budget. The process of arriving at the budget is based on the recommendations of the Subcommittee on Senate Estimates and Committee Budgets. The Subcommittee is comprised of myself as Chair, Senator Marshall, Deputy Chairs, and Senators Bovee, Modi, and Tanis. I thank them for their substantial time and effort they spent on reviewing the estimates. The members of the Subcommittee met with the Senate Administration Executive Committee and most of the directors on many occasions. Detailed presentations were made by the directorates to the subcommittee. The members had the opportunity to discuss and question funding, staffing, and expenses requirements during this process. Throughout its consideration in the 2023-2024 main estimates, the committee took into consideration not only the changes in the Senate, but also the effects of new economic and operational realities resulting from two years of pandemic that has had a significant impact on the Senate's operation. The committee was also very mindful of the Canadian economic environment and the importance of balancing operational needs with proper stewardship of public funds. Moving to the detail of the expenditures, I would remind Senators that there are two parts to the budget. One is statutory funding and the other one is vote, voted funding. The statutory portion deals with money allocated by legislation. This includes Senators' basic and additional allowances and pensions, Senators' travel and living expenses, telecommunications and employee benefit plans. Any shortfalls in these categories at the end of the year are covered by the Treasury Board. Conversely, surpluses are automatic automatically returned to the Treasury Board as they cannot be uh, reallocated. The second part of the budget is the voted budget, which is for the workings of the Senate. They cover Senators' office budgets and Senate administration. Moving to the numbers. The total amount of the statutory, the statutory budget is $38.1 million, an increase of $800,000, or 2.2 percent, from last year. The main reason for the increase is the Senator's travel budget, which is increasing by $418,000 to reflect the recent increase in travel costs. The other increase is the contribution of the Employee Benefit Plan, which rose by $391,000 due to the increase of 0.2% of the Treasury Board rate from 15 to 15.2%. Moving to the second part of the voted budget, this portion is $88.6 million, an increase of $4.1 million or 4.8%. The major components of the voted budget growth are the international and interparliamentary affairs Directorate increased by $201,000 to cover the cost of the 47th annual session of the Assemblée parlementaire de la Francophonie and the 31st annual session of the OSCE. There was an increase of $100,000 for the Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Program and additional funding of $2.5 million to maintain and renew the IT infrastructure and technologies new resources to support human resources activities and services and funding for the East Bloc and Senate of Canada building cafeteria. New funding requests approved by CBA during the year amounted to $1.1 million, primarily due to economic increases for the Senate Executive Group and the Middle Management Group for two additional resources for the new enhanced security measure in support of senators and staff for the parliamentary security branch and two additional resources for the committee's branch. An amount of $146,000 was included primarily to, to, to cover rather position reclassifications, 
In addition, the following two budget transfers were approved. The first is a reallocation from the Senate Committee's budget of $179,000 to the Senate Administration to cover the salaries of two resources to support witnesses appearing in virtual mode. The second is a reallocation from the Audit and Oversight Committee budget of $178,000 to the Senate Administration to cover the salary of a new Chief Audit Executive. Initiatives requiring one-time funding will be self-funded to the tune of $924,000, primarily for strategic HR planning related to the Employment Participation Survey and Compensation Review, the ongoing maintenance and renewal of the Senate Network, and the renewal of two resources to support the renewal of the network and the redesign of many processes. Following a decision by the members of the Governance and Budgets Committee on December 15th, there is a temporary hiring freeze resulting in a staffing threshold of 441.2 FTEs. A review of operational efficiencies is currently underway and is being conducted by the Subcommittee on Estimates. This committee is responsible for assessing the administration's expenditure and performance in key areas in order to identify opportunities for saving, savings and rationalizations of services. It should be noted that any proposed changes will be presented to and approved by uh, CBA. Before I conclude, I would like to once again thank the subcommittee member, the members of the subcommittee, the Senate administration staff, and the members of the executive committee. They approach the budget in a thoughtful and prudent manner. I would also like to give specifics on newspaper articles that recently. Uh, noted the Senate's financial situation. They uh, created confusion and gave a misleading portrait of the Senate's actual financial situation. Businesses and budgets are often used to explain the cost of operating the Senate. Colleagues, there is a difference between a budget and actual expenses. The budget is the overall amount allocated for, for the functioning of the Senate during a year, whereas the expenses are the amount that are actually spent. Here are the figures for both budget and expenses. So if you remember, in the newspapers, we had comparison from 2015-2016. The budget at that time was $88.8 .8 million. The 2023-2024 budget is at $126.7 million. The increase in the budget between 2023-2024 and 2015-2016 and is $37.9 million, or 42.6%, representing an annual budget increase of 5.3%. If you compare the actual expense, so I'm talking about expenses now, not talking about budget, they were $74.6 million in 2015-2016 and $96.4 million for the year 2021-2022. That represents an increase of $21.8 million or 4.9% a year over six years. The budget for the upcoming fiscal year 2023-2024 totals $126.7 million. This represents an increase of 4.9%, of 4.9 million, or 4% over the fiscal year from 2022-2023. So we're back to talking about budgets. The annual average budget increase for the past three years is approximately $3.7 million, per year, or 3.1 percent. The 2023-2024 budget is based on the principles of maintaining high-quality services to senators and sound management of public funds in the context of the pandemic and post-pandemic recovery. It includes infl inflation, economic salary increases, increase in costs, investments in technology, and new initiatives. Some of the new initiatives are actually required by law. The Canada Labour Code, the Pay Equity Act, and the Accessibility Act require the Senate to implement new programs with deadlines predefined by the regulation, 
including pay equity, accessibility, and harassment prevention. In addition to these regulatory requirements, the Senate is working to implement initiatives on diversity and inclusion, recruitment and audit, and oversight. As a reminder, the Senate has actual expenses, and in the last six years, all surpluses amount were returned to the government's central funds. And my last remark will be on the amount of work that is done by staff just to keep this institution running. We have 18 permanent committees. We have 17 seven subcommittees. We have four fixed committees. We have three Senate sittings a week, and we have four meetings or four groups and caucuses that meet on a weekly basis. Every time there is a committee meeting, there is at least between 20 and 25 people that are involved. So if you add up all of these committee meetings and the work that is done during a week, there's a lot of staff that is um, used and that is at our service in the Senate. And I will say that the service that we receive from our staff is excellent. And I have no complaints whatsoever. On this note, colleague, I rest my case. <laughs>